Hello, this is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to episode 10 of Exploring Joomla 3.x. In the last episode, we uh, started a new module. We laid the foundation with uh, our smallest module and using it to copy the code. Uh, in addition um, to you know changing the file names and updating the XML file, we uh, added a language file and talked a little bit about um, where the language files were stored and the file naming conventions and uh, we created some language files uh, for our random quote module the system and the regular um, component or I'm sorry extension uh, language file and remember we, I said that there were two places that we could have stored those and we stored ours within the extension itself and um, I showed you where they were um, the language strings were used and that we will uh, talk more about that as we uh, develop our extension. And then uh, we kind of branched out from there a little bit and, and um, we come up with the concept of a view and we set a static view, the default view, because later we'll want to use more and um, and uh, you know just basically covered that and uh, made sure that uh, we were ready to go. So at this point we um, uh, have a skeleton of a module that we've written and we need to expand it. Now this module we said was going to be for random quotes and uh, in order to uh, be of any real use uh, we gotta have some random quotes. Now there's a couple of uh, ways that we can approach this. We could use some sort of data structure within the module itself and and pull a random quote out of that or uh, we can put the random quotes in a database and then um, you know get one from the database which I think is a better better way to do it so uh, this episode is uh, gonna focus on uh, the part of uh, creating the table in the Joomla database populating it with data and then um, creating the uh, SQL file to do that and installing it to verify that it did create the uh, database table populate it with data and then uninstall to make sure that it dropped it so Let's uh, let's get started. So in my projects folder, I created a uh, uh, a folder called source quotes for the database, and in here I have a spreadsheet. This is a LibreOffice um, uh, calc, and uh, I'm going to open this up. And what I've done here is I've I've created three columns: one called name, one called quote, and one called source. And then under each one, um, I put the name of the the author that said the said whatever quote it was, the quote itself, and then the source from where the quote come from. Now, I'm using uh, founder uh, founding fathers of the United States of America quotes. You can use you know whatever you want, but uh, I, I happen to think that some of these uh, quotes are pretty good, so that's what I want to work with. Um, so if you're not caught up at this point, I do want to say before we get started here that if you uh, need the current source code. Uh, you can go to uh, myheap.com and on the main menu if you go to technology exploring Joomla 3 and then over here on the right hand side writing modules for Joomla 3x you'll see part 3 is the last one we just finished you can download the source code here and of course you can down watch the video from that episode or you can download uh, a PDF of this document right here and work at your own pace. So if you don't have the code, uh, you can you can get it here, and then uh, just unzip it to your random quote folder, and that's what you're seeing right here. Okay. So now, um, like I said, I've created this uh, folder here just to hold my some stuff that we're going to do, and I have this um, spreadsheet opened up. So again, uh, you probably want to maybe pause your uh, video and and go collect your quotes. You can have one quote, you can have 100 quotes, it, it doesn't matter, whatever you want. I, I stopped at 50. So so now, um, how do we get this stuff into a database, right? Well, there's, there's all kinds of ways to do it, but I, I think the easiest way is to use um, the PHP My Admin tool uh, in conjunction with the comma separated values file and import it in. So, and that's what we're going to do. So, uh, right now, you know, I have a, a calc spreadsheet here and I want to save this as a, a, a CSV file, comma separated values, and to do that I'm going to go to File and Save As. Okay, and you see here I'm 
in the, it's in the folder that that I've opened this original file from. And the format I'm going to choose, I'm going to scroll down until I find text CSV. Okay, I'm just going to leave the name as Founder Quotes. It'll just change the extension for me. I'm going to hit save. Now it says, hey, do you want to use the ODF format or the CSV format? Well, I just want to use the CSV format. So I'm going to hit that. And then we come to the uh, uh, options for exporting the file. So the character set we want to use, of course, is UTF-8. The field delimiter means that uh, we want to use a comma, which means that George Washington, comma, the quote, and then comma, the source, and then the next line, we're going to repeat that. The text delimiter of double quote means that whatever is in this cell will be surrounded by double quotes okay and then uh, finally we want to save the cell content as shown and we also want to check this box here quote all text cells okay and so with all that out of the way we're going to hit OK and bang we're done so we're going to close this file and if we look in the source quotes for for the database we see there's the founder quotes CSV and if we open that We'll see literally it's name, comma, quote, comma, source, name, comma, quote, comma, source. So you, you see how it's laid out. All right, so now let's uh, go to PHP My Admin. So I'm going to go to JoomDev. Remember that's my virtual host there and PHP My Admin. Now remember we had turned on um, maximum error reporting so if you get that big old string of errors here just scroll down to the bottom and tell them to hide it and that stuff will go away for as long as your browser has been open. So log into PHP My Admin. Okay. And we don't need that. And we're going to select the database that we used when we created Joomla. When we installed Joomla I called mine Joom3. You may have called your something different. So we're going to click on that, and then in the right-hand side we see all of the tables that belong to, to the Joomla database. And we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, where it gives us an opportunity to create an additional table. Now, remember when we installed Joomla that we were given a prefix, a random prefix, or you could have said it. My random prefix is C12Q4 underscore. Uh, yours will be something different. Um, the reason why Joomla does that, it kind of obfuscates uh, uh, the database because you know, a hacker really wouldn't know what this random character was. He may know what these tables are, but he wouldn't know what it preceded with. So we're going to uh, we're going to create a table, and we're going to use that same prefix, that C12Q4 underscore, and then we're going to give it uh, a name. Now, one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're naming your database tables is that you need to sort of namespace them. In other words, you don't want to uh, give it some sort of generic name and then later install another uh, extension and it collide with it because it just it'll mess everything up. So a lot of times, you know, you'll see um, maybe the first three letters of a of a company or maybe uh, your initials or something, then the name of it. But since we only have one table, I'm just going to name the table the same as the extension. So mod underscore random underscore quote and I'm going to want four columns now the columns that we're going to create are one for each one uh, each column that's in our CSV file the the name column the quote column and the source column and then we also want an index so that's what we have four so we're going to hit go and then PHP my admin gives you a table here uh, so that you can set up the the um, the the uh, data uh, the table elements. So the first one we're just going to call is ID. Okay. Now ID is going to be the index. So we're going to say that this is an integer. Okay. And um, because it's an index, it's not going to be uh, null. So we're, we're going to say hey, this is going to be unsigned. And we're going to make this a primary index. Now you may get this here about naming this. Just hit go. Okay. And then finally, we want it to auto increment. That means that uh, we don't want, if we add something to it, and uh, we don't want uh, we don't want to have to try to figure out what number to give it. Just give it the next available number. So the whole idea is that this ID is just a unique number assigned to the table. That way, George Washington can be listed several times, or or a same a different quotes from the same source could be listed, and you're not going to collide with anything. So we're going to check that, and then you can give it uh, you can give it a comment. So I'm going to just say this is the quote index, 
And then next uh, will be the name of the person that is giving the quote. And it's a, we're going to make that uh, a Verker. And we're going to give that a length of 75. Okay. And then we don't need to change any of these other attributes here. Comment as this is the author name. And then the next one, this will be the, the quote that they're saying. And we're just going to make this a text field because we don't really know how long the quote's going to be. Uh, this might be a problem later. We might address that uh, when we maybe go, come in and optimize this. We don't need to make any other changes here. And we'll give it a, uh, uh, a comment of the author quote. And then finally, we have the source. This is the source that the quote come from. This is going to be a Vercare, and we're going to give it about 200 should be enough. And uh, if, if they happen to be longer, they'll be truncated. So if we see that, we can come back and correct that later. Okay, and finally, we don't need to change anything here. And we'll call this the, uh, this is the source document that the quote has come from. Now, the table comment, you can put a comment here. You know, you can say this is the, um, um, uh, this is the uh, mod random quote table or whatever you want here. The collation will just leave it uh, as it is on the database server and then the storage engine I kinda like INODB uh, but I like uh, I like INODB because or NODB or whatever it's called um, because it supports transactions and maybe we'll discuss transactions later so we'll hit uh, save here and if all was good uh, we will be put into the structure of the table that we created we can see here table C one Q or one two Q four mod random quotes. This is the mod random quotes table, uh, and then the the uh, table columns that we've created. So with the table initially created, we want to uh, we want to fill this table with our quotes, and it's actually pretty simple with uh, our table highlighted. Uh, you can either select it from the top links here or if you want to you can click on Joom 3 and then you can come down and find <clears throat> the mod random quote and click on it either way there's a number of ways to get there and we're going to click import okay now importing is pretty simple we're going to remember we saved that CSV file we're going to click browse and then uh, remember I kept mine I saved mine into the source quotes for the database and then there's a CSV file I'm gonna open that okay um, partial import remember that we had headers for the very first column uh, our first row uh, of the table and we we called name source and uh, I'm sorry name quote and source well we don't actually want to import that text in there so we're gonna say hey skip the first one okay so that's the partial import so we skip the first one. Uh, we can leave the rest of this alone except down here uh, the column names. Now recall that when we created the table we created four columns. We created an ID, a name, a quote, and a source. Uh, but our CSV uh, file only has three of the four. So what, we, what we're going to do is here is we're going we're to put the column names that we created in the table map them up by each section of our CSV file okay and if you mouse over this this, this gives you a, a little probably better explanation it says if the data in each row of the file is not in the same order as the database list the corresponding column names here column names must be separated by commas and not enclosed in quotations so the first um, the first uh, column in our CSV file uh, relates to the name field uh, in the uh, table. The second one is the quote and the third one is um, the source. Okay, so that's all we need for that. So this way when it goes through it, it says, okay, the first thing I'm filling in is a name and then I'm filling in a quote and I'm filling in a source. It won't touch the index, but because we gave the index auto increment, uh, it will do it it will automatically create those numbers for us. So it's simple as that. We hit the go button and if all went well we should get 
a message here at the top says the import has successfully finished 50 queries executed founder quote CSV so here it shows some of the um, SQL that it generated to install the um, um, the data in our CSV file so now to verify that we can click over here on the table again tables you know and <clears throat> you see that the browse tab is highlighted and we see that our quotes are actually in the table so that's that's how we uh, created the table now you know if a you if a user wanted to create a table or you know if, if if we could literally take our uh, module right now and start querying data out of this table and use it but but that that's a huge inconvenience for a user because they would um, you know they don't want to have to uh, create uh, quotes they just want to use it so this whole exercise was uh, to give us a simpler way to get the SQL code that we need uh, for Joomla to use to build this data um, um, than trying to write all that stuff by hand so now that we've got that what we want to do is we want to export this table as a SQL file so with the table selected we're gonna click the export tab okay and this is pretty simple we're just going to do a quick SQL export that's all we're going to do and click go and then it's going to offer to save the file it should offer to save the file so you notice that it gives the file name the same as the table name with a dot SQL well, I'm going to save this okay and let's go over here now my um, Firefox is set up to um, save stuff in the downloads folder I'm just gonna go over here. there's the file here I'm just gonna cut it from here and put it over here in my source quotes for the database and now let's open this up let's open this up with uh, gedit and you'll see um, we set some uh, set some values on the SQL server we create a table uh, we insert all the data into the table and uh, we add a primary key and then we set the auto increment and where the increment uh, should start at so this is all the SQL that we would need to actually uh, recreate this table in the data um, but the format that it's in won't quite work for Joomla we'll have to make some changes so I'm just gonna close that for now and let's talk about uh, Joomla in the database now Joomla when you create an extension whether it's a module or a component or whatever the manifest file the file that we're always talking about this XML file uh, has uh, some uh, tags in there that allow you to install uh, uninstall or update SQL files well the only two that we're going to worry about right now are the installing and uninstalling so the install tag uh, will point to the SQL file that Joomla will execute uh, when it's an installing when it's ex installing an extension for the first time uh, the SQL file uh, will create the tables, insert data required, and all that sort of stuff. You know, for the extension to work. The uninstall tag is very, very similar to the install tag, except that it's pointing to the SQL file that Joomla will execute when you uninstall, and uh, it's responsible for you know removing any tables that it had created or any other uh, uh, database-related items. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of folks. Um, who write extensions uh, that will not remove their tables uh, when a user uninstalls their extension and the, the the idea there is like well maybe the user had just messed something up with a code or something like that doesn't want to lose their data uh, but wants to reinstall the extension so that uh, maybe it'll work and that's probably okay but my mindset is that if you got somebody that's willing to go in and uh, manipulate uh, the PHP code that's driving the extension they probably know enough about databases to do a backup of their data anyway and it's probably better at least in my mind to uh, go ahead and drop the tables um, that uh, you know that the extension created and then the other tag is the update tag now the update tag uh, will uh, point to um, where the update files are and there would be one for each version update and it's and it's a little bit um, um, it's not complicated but there's it's more than I'm willing to go into in this tutorial so we're gonna leave um, update uh, uh, to where when we start updating our this module here with uh, other database items so now 
let's create the directory structure that we're going to need uh, and the files that we're going to need um, for Joomla to install this database table that we've created. So in the uh, root of our random quote uh, source folder, uh, remember we had language and, and template. This one here doesn't really matter, it's just source quotes. Uh, we're going to create another folder and we're going to call it SQL. Okay, and like every folder, uh, we're going to copy uh, an index.html file in there to prevent Apache from listing the contents of the directory uh, in case they don't have that feature turned off or overridden in an HT access file. So now in here we need um, two files. Uh, we need an install SQL file and an uninstall SQL file. Now like everything else in Joomla, they, we follow these naming conventions. So the first one, we're going to create a new empty file and we're going to call it install, right, because it's the install file dot and then what database driver does this file support? Well in this case it's MySQL right dot and then what character encoding is it? Well this is UTF-8 dot SQL. So <clears throat> do they have to be named this? No, because in the XML file we can uh, explicitly name a file anything we want. But you know, convention convention goes a long way uh, in in, confu in you know preventing confusion later. So whenever you follow this naming convention, uh, you know at a glance that okay, this is an install file for MySQL, uh, or it's an uninstall for MySQL. If we wanted to support multiple databases, we would create one called uh, like install.msql.utf8.sql if we wanted to support um, Microsoft SQL Server or install.postgres.utf8.sql if we wanted to support the Postgres database server. So in this uh, series we're only going to uh, mess about with uh, MySQL just to keep things simple. Um, so in addition to this file we have to have an uninstall file so we're going to create another empty folder here and we're going to call this uninstall.mysql.utf8.sql notice the same uh, naming conventions now just to just kind of bump back and talk about the upgrades the upgrades uh, they have a different naming convention convention and it's based upon the version number of the component but like I said we'll talk about that later okay so let's um, we need to edit these files and get the uh, SQL code in there that uh, will will do what uh, we need it to do so let's start with the simplest one first uninstall right because all we want to do with the uninstall is get rid of the junk we put in the database so let's open that up with gedit and uh, all we need to put in here uh, is drop table right because we want to drop a table well we only want to drop the table if it exists right so this uh, doesn't throw an error if the tables not there for some reason or another and then inside of back ticks we want to put the name of the table okay now remember my table was C one two Q four underscore mod underscore random underscore quote okay now this would be perfect for mine because my table all my table names start with C12Q4 right but um, remember when you install Joomla that's that's random so how does Joomla know what to um, what to drop well it uses this little thing here if we replace this random um, characters here at the beginning with a uh, uh, a number sign or an octothorpe or a hashtag however you want to call it and an underscore so that the name of the table is preceded by um, pound sign underscore underscore and then the name of the table Joomla kinda uses this right here as a bit of a macro and says oh okay so in this place I'm gonna put the you know four or five or six characters and the underscore that I created in front of this name so in this case it says okay well if the table whatever the prefix I'm using mod random quote exists then we're going to drop it that's all it is so it's pretty simple it's probably a whole lot more words than we needed uh, to explain it but this is the thing to take away from it inside Joomla when you're dealing with the database because we don't know what the prefix to any of the tables are we're always always going to use this pound underscore underscore to reference any table name 
so we're going to save this and close it and man that was simple that's all we need to uninstall the database table from our component or our extension I should say okay so now the install um, file let's open that with gedit and let's also go back over here to our random quote source quotes for DB and let's open this SQL file that we saved remember it's the table name um, the SQL file and let's open that with gedit as well so uh, you'll see that it opens it up in the same instance of gedit and this one here is the blank this one here is the one that we downloaded uh, from the backup or the dump that we've done from PHP Miami. So all I'm going to do is here is I'm going to hit Control A and select all of this. I'm going to right click and copy it and then I'm going to go over to my install file and I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to just close the SQL file. Now you might be asking why didn't I just you know put the SQL file over there and rename it. And, and, but I, I kind of like keeping the original source files around uh, unharmed uh, for my own use. Alright, so now again if we look at this we see that there's some SQL uh, stuff set here. Uh, there's comments. Anything that starts with two hyphens is a comment. Anything that starts with a slash uh, asterisk is a comment. Um, so we can remove those. And as a matter of fact, just to keep uh, data sizes smaller, I always remove the comments. So I'm going to go through here and delete anything that starts with a dash dash or a slash star to make uh, my file sizes just a little bit smaller. Let me get down here to the bottom and let's get rid of these and these and these okay so now we're left with basically four SQL commands plus two environment settings now we don't know what the environment settings are on the um, on the server that we're going to install for so we're going to remove any of those so anything that starts with set and then some key and then a value we're just going to, to remove those from the file so the long and the short of it is is that we're left with four uh, SQL commands. We're going to create a table and this is the table we're going to create and this is what the table consists of. We're going to insert data into that table and this is the data. Finally we're going to say hey we're going to add the primary key of ID and then finally we're going to say hey we, we need to set uh, ID uh, to this and that it's auto increment and that we're going to start the, start the increment at 51. It's starting the increment at 51 for me because I had 50 quotes. Okay, but now remember I said that um, this prefix doesn't make any sense to Joomla that we should use that little macro the hash underscore underscore. So uh, either do a search and replace or just scroll through it and change these by hand the prefix and add hash underscore underscore so you see I say hash underscore underscore and then the table name so we're going to go through and replace all of these right hash underscore underscore and then down here where we're altering hash underscore underscore and then finally here where we're altering again so now Joomla can actually use this here to uh, the SQL here to make changes to the database um, for its install. So with that out of the way, let's save that and close it. And that's all we need to do. So now uh, in our SQL, we have uh, both the install and the uninstall SQL files done. Okay. So now we need to um, we need to uh, get Joomla to install these. And remember, all the installation, everything that Joomla does, and creating uh, and copying files and and everything is done in the manifest file. Remember that's the XML file. So we're going to open that up to edit with gedit. Okay, so now remember I told you that the uh, manifest file has some tags dealing with the database and that was install, uninstall, and update. But for now we're only going to do the install and uninstall. So uh, right after description in between files we're going to add the install tag and remember I'm kinda anal and a poor typist 
I like to open and close my tags at the same time. Um, now inside the install tags we need a SQL tag. I don't know if any other tags here are supported but this is um, convention so we have to follow it. So let me close that tag. And then finally uh, inside the SQL tags we have a file tag. And then the file will tell it you know where the file is located based from where this file is and you remember we put it in a SQL folder okay slash and then the the name of the file that we want to run is install dot mysql dot utf eight dot sql and then we want to end the tag okay but this uh, this is not really complete because uh, this doesn't tell us, uh, I mean even though we know from this file name that this is uh, this is for MySQL we need to tell Joomla that this file is for MySQL so we got some attributes that we need to um, apply to the file tag and the first one is driver so the driver tag is uh, what is the database engine network that this SQL file supports well in this case it's MySQL okay and then the next uh, attribute is character set, car set, and this says simply, okay, this is the encoding that this file is encoded as, and we said that this is UTF-8, okay. So if we wanted to uh, support multiple um, databases, remember I said that we could uh, create it like an install.msql.utf, well we would do that same thing, we would just add another file line here, and say okay file driver equals ms sql character set equals utf8 and then we would put sql install dot ms sql dot utf8 you, you get the idea so you can support as many different um, database engines uh, that uh, Joomla has drivers for but again like I said we're just going to stick with mysql to keep it simple okay so that's enough information to uh, to uh, uh, for Joomla to have to install um, to run this SQL script to you know create the database table populate it with data set the index and then set the auto increment so we're good to go so now if somebody uninstalls our uh, uh, module we want to be able to Joomla to be able to do that so we have another tag here called uninstall and this is super similar to uh, the install tags. Matter of fact, it's basically the same, except that uh, the, the tag that we're using here is uninstall, and I need to end that, or we're going to have a issue there. Okay, and this is SQL, and in the SQL, and finally we need that file tag. This file tag is in the same format so it's, it's a file the driver for this um, um, database engine that we're supporting with this file is MySQL okay the character set encoding um, is UTF-8 and then finally where's the file at it's in SQL slash uninstall dot mysql.utf8.sql and let's close the tag <clears throat> excuse me so all right so now uh, we have enough information um, in the manifest file to install uh, the table populate it with data and if they want to uninstall our extension we have uh, the file here to run to drop the table now the only other thing that we need to add um, uh, it needs to know about that SQL folder and remember we just want the SQL folder and everything under it so we're just going to add another folder directive here and the folder we want to copy is SQL and that's everything that we need um, to get that data copied over by the Joomla install um, methods okay so um, the uh, next thing we need to do is we need to kind of check our work. So let's uh, save this file and uh, we'll close this. Now remember we created this table uh, inside of PHP MyAdmin. So let's uh, 
uh, on the left let's select the database for Joomla mine was Joom3 and let's go down here and find the table that we created here it is uh, mod random quote I'm just going to drop this table from the database so I'm gonna select it come straight across to drop and it says hey are you sure you want to destroy this well yeah otherwise I wouldn't have told you but make sure you read it because it's easy to get the um, uh, wrong table uh, uh, or you know drop a wrong table if they're real close together and you got small text on your screen so we'll hit OK and we get a success message saying that hey I just dropped your junk okay so with that out of the way let's go back over to our mod random quote and let's create our source file of course we know we need the language folder we need the SQL the template the index our PHP and our manifest file we do not have to zip this up um, and even if we did it wouldn't be copied over because we didn't tell it to copy it over in the XML file this is just um, stuff we're leaving around here for the um, uh, for the sake of uh, our development. So let's uh, compress this and create a new archive. Yep, I'm going to call it mod random quote, and there we have it right there. All right, so let's just, I'm just going to get rid of this one here so it's not confusing. So um, size is now 9.8K, so we've grown just a little bit. So now let's test it. Now we haven't changed any code inside of. Uh, of our module to actually use this database, but we can still come back to PHP my admin to see did it create it and did it delete it because that's all we're really concerned with in this tutorial. So let's uh, let's open up our Joom Dev site and let's go to the back end administrator and let's log in. I think mine was admin admin and there we go. Oh, looky there. Joomla 3.6.0 is available. Update now. Well, I'll tell you what, that might be the next one. Um, just in case no one's ever updated uh, Joomla inside, I'll make a little quick episode on that, but we'll save that for next time. So let's go to um, Extensions and Manage and Install. Now remember, if you have the old, uh, uh, the old module or the module installed, it doesn't matter. We're using the update method. We're not using any versioning yet. We shouldn't run any problems. We're just going to install it over it. If it's not there, then it's not a big deal either. So we're going to select the mod random quote zip file that we created and upload and install. So let's see what we got here. Well, we got a message that said that the installation of the module was successful. Well, let's go over here to PHP My Admin. We're going to select the Joom 3 database. And I'm going to scroll down and see if I see mod random quote. So there it is, mod random quote. And you see that it used my prefix. So that hash or octothorpe or pound sign, whatever you want to call it, underscore underscore, replaced it with the C12Q4 underscore and then the name of the table. So that uh, that's just demonstrates that that works. And if we click on that and we look in here, we see that it looks like all the data was populated. And if we look at the structure, we see that our ID is set to auto increment. It's unsigned. Everything looks really good. So uh, that's good. So we know that the install portion is working. So let's go over here to the back end and let's manage and let's uninstall it. Uh, let's select the type as module so we don't have so many to scroll through. And we're looking for the random quote module. And do, 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 do. there it is so let's uninstall yes I want to remove it and see what happens well okay well we got a uh, message says that the uh, uninstalling the module was successful so let's go over here and let's click back on our database that we use for Joomla and scroll down see if we can find mod random quote well there's modules no, nope, it's gone. So it dropped it. We know it worked. So let's say that um, you uh, uninstalled and set it uninstalled, but the table's still there. Well, what you'll want to check is uh, uh, make sure that uh, the names and everything that you, the file names are correct, uh, that, and they're correct in the manifest file, and uh, they're spelled it's spelled the same as uh, in the file system. And you'll also want to check um, since we hand typed the SQL uh, for the uninstall if we look here um, 
we'll want to make sure that you know that we have this table name correct and then back quotes As a matter of fact when I was uh, testing you know I put on the caps lock and it's like drop table if exists you know hash underscore underscore moderate and quote and this was all in capital letters and I didn't notice it well uh, my SQL at least under Unix is uh, case sensitive so capital mod random quote all caps is different than lowercase so it didn't drop it didn't actually drop the table but because we use the if exists well there wasn't an error so we didn't get any error so Julian reported that everything was fine but when I looked over here I seen that the table was still there so that's just some of those things to look at so um, that's probably enough for this tutorial just want to uh, demonstrate a method of, of creating the SQL files um, by using a PHP MyAdmin as a tool and a CSV file and uh, building the table and, and uh, to uh, export the SQL that we can use with some modification to get uh, Joomla to install it. Um, in the next episode um, we'll start uh, adding some code um, to talk to the database to display a random quote. I want to talk a little bit more probably about language strings just a little bit because uh, um, I had mentioned JTEXT and I just kind of want to give a maybe a brief uh, view of that and uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, the model view controller um, sort of model view controller idea for modules even though it, it doesn't use the classic views and controllers but we should still break down our code for maintainability so um, again um, you will find uh, part four uh, when I get it complete um, posted on the website uh, it'll be right here after part three uh, you'll be able to download the um, source code and I will include in the source code um, I will include the um, the zip file and I will zip this folder up so that you have all three of these the ODS the CSV and the SQL in case you don't have those tools or don't want to install uh, labor office or something like that so uh, I will zip this folder up and zip it together with the the component zip file so that you will be at the state that I am um, at, at the end of this tutorial so again if you have any questions um, please come um, uh, either post below the video on YouTube if you're watching from YouTube if you're watching these from my site please use the contact us um, link at the top and send me an email and I will do my best to uh, answer your questions. Uh, keep in mind that uh, I'm, I'm a novice programmer. Some of the information uh, may be technically incorrect. So if you have experience, please jump right in there and say, hey, dude, uh, you're not quite doing this right or you explained this wrong. And, and that makes me a better programmer. And uh, it, it helps other people um, uh, along the way. And uh, Joomla is a wonderful product. I encourage you to, to to use it, play with it. Uh, there's the, the the if if you are willing to learn to program, it's almost limitless what you can do with it. Um, so other than that, um, I will see you in the next video, which will probably be a, a, an upgrade. Maybe I don't know. I'll decide, oh, or it might be uh, part five of of this uh, module um, that I'm working on. So in the meantime, have a blessed day.